Hi there, I'm Bonnie Log Cabin Stitcher. Welcome to my channel and welcome to my sewing room. I have returned to the floss tube world after two years of pretty much taking myself all the way out of it and doing huge life changes, moving to Colorado and getting established here. And um, it was just, it was phenomenal the response that I had from my return, both from people who have been waiting for me and watching for me, as well as so many new people that got to see my channel and come for a visit and um, just say how much they valued my uh, my videos. So thank you so much. It It is um, unbelievable. And I just want to come back and share with you. I have a huge array in front of me. And because this is a whole new setup for me, um, trying to figure out, I'm trying to sit, but this is a bar stool and I'll probably be swinging around. So it'll probably drive everybody crazy and even me. Um, and usually I stand up, but this is, this is different. And it was so funny when I was doing my videos after I did it and I thought, I'm not going to redo it. I watched it for the first time and I thought, oh my word, I see the top of my head all the time. And an aging gray head is not the thing that I want to stare at. So we're going to try this, but for all I know, um, this may not be the best setup and next week I may, or next time I may do something different. So let's jump in and share with you, um, what's been going on for the last two and a half weeks. Basically, I've been trying to fully finish all the projects that I had been stitching. We spent most of the time in the last two years, um, living full time in a little tiny log cabin and um, we were under construction downstairs and I shared in my last video how I got to do a lot of that refurbishing of our cabin. And um, it was very interesting, but it worked. And so cross stitch is great. Um, I did a little bit of quilting up there and I did um, little tiny blocks big but I didn't have a lot of room so cross stitch worked out really well and since I have so many new people that have found my channel and want to come back for a visit I have several videos from the very beginning when I started my channel in 2020 one of them is about my cross stitch setup I think I called it the perfect setup and I still use that now. It's amazing. It's it's an LED magnifying light that you can get on Amazon. Um, so that um, I totally use. And that's why it was really great up at our little tiny cabin because it was a small setup. But I stitched and stitched and didn't finish anything because it was just, I didn't have my supplies and it was just too awkward. So I have a lot of finishing. And now that everything, most of my supplies were in storage for a year, and now I'm unpacking, trying to get them set up. So it's amazing, but still I'm, I'm having a hard time. I knew I had some supplies up at the cabin. And as we were packing from there a couple months ago, I just I was just packing random boxes so it got really disorganized and I have to keep going out to Hobby Lobby and buying supplies but I know I've got it like the glues and all that kind of stuff I know I have it somewhere in my garage now but it has been fun trying to get back in the groove of how I do these things how I make the pillows so I've been trying to I've been watching Vanna the Twisted Stitcher seeing how I make pillows again, the whole process. And the first one I did, I did it, I did it wrong. So I had to undo it and do it again. How do I lace again? The first one was pretty rough. And so I'm just learning how to do those things. But Vanna, um, the Twisted Stitcher has so many tutorials and um, they have been really great. So I'm gonna address a couple questions that I had in my comments and just share with you the stuff that I've got because I need to get it put away, but I'm kind of tired of trying to finish things. I have a mess and I'm ready just to sit and stitch again. So I wanted to show you the process because not everybody finishes their own um, their own things. And it, it is pretty messy to try to do that when you're auditioning 
um, fabrics and, and this and that. So I just wanted to share with you kind of what goes through my head and what goes across my sewing table. So when we moved out here to Colorado, and also when we were at the cabin, we had snow. And I shared in the last video about how the snow at the cabin was not always fun. And so I stopped stitching the let it snow things because I was done with the snow at the cabin. But here, it's marvelous. We have snow, it melts, it's beautiful. I love it. So one of the things that I was trying to, and I didn't have a lot of snow things because in California, unless we were up at the mountains, we didn't have snow. So there wasn't really, I did some snowmen, but it has been really fun. So this, this was a fun one. I think this was called Little Sam Snowman. It was a freebie from Lori Brecklin at Not Forgotten Farm. And I grunged it up. So I stitched it and then I coffee dyed it or tea dyed it. And I've been playing around. I was gonna do it as a pillow and I, I have lots of fabric. So I was playing with the backing. And then I thought, well, I may be getting tired of pillows. And so I am new to I haven't even done it. I'm new to buying the paper mache things, but um, these are the paper mache boxes and they are kind of cheesy. Um, and I don't know how much I'm gonna love them because they don't always close nicely. But this was what I was, this is what I just wanted to share with you. This is what I do. And sometimes I make myself crazy with trying too many things. And I just think, just get it done. Just get it done and off and on to the next thing. But I was getting out my trim and um, just trying to see what am I gonna do. And then I had to go get the Mod Podge because I have not I have not done this before, but there was a Blackbird Designs, how to cover um, either a paper mache box or a cardboard box. And so I was watching that. So that's what I'm gonna be playing with this week. Or I may just box it up and deal with it next year. We'll see. But another fun thing that I did, I had shared this stitch that I had completed um, in the last video. So this is Let It Snow, and it's by um, Threadwork Primitives. And I changed the I changed the thread, and I I'll put it in the show notes. But I think it was Picnic Basket, and I finished it up. Um, but the pattern had called for it in red and I had seen on Pinterest where it was done in brown and I love browns and I wanted it not just for Christmas, but also in the winter time when we have a lot of browns outside because the grass isn't really growing, but it takes, it takes a mess because I'm trying all the different fabrics. I love the fabric on the back of the pillows to really showcase some of my favorite fabric and I want it to look perfect. <laughs> so I just get all caught up in trying to choose the perfect fabric. I had this fabric that I was going to make a quilt from. I have a lot of different um, pine needle and pine cone fabric that I never made a quilt for for the cabin, but we have that going on here, so I will. But that's the fun thing, and so I'm pulling out fabrics just for the back of a pillow, um, but that's all part of it, and it it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of thinking, but that's, I'm assuming that's what you guys do too if you are finishers. So here's here's what I would like to know. For you guys that finish your own pillows and such, do you play around that much with your fabrics or do you just have a few fabrics that you put on the back? How do you feel about the back of your pillows? Do you even really look at them or pay attention to them? I would love to hear what you do because it's something that I really love. Sometimes I find I'm looking at the back of the pillow a lot, like I'll walk by and I'll just pick it up because I have a favorite fabric on the back of the pillow. So for me, it's fun and I enjoy that. Okay, so that's what I've been doing. So let's see what I actually got finished. And since I saw you last, I have these boxes back here, our baskets, they're baskets. And they are, they are some of my cross stitch whips. So the work's in progress. And I was just going through them all, trying to prioritize which ones are almost done that I can just finish with. Because I think I counted them up and I had maybe 36. And I thought, well, I have all these new things I wanna start, let's finish some old things. So I did finish something. I didn't even share this with you last time, but this is a pillow and this is, 
This is Hello Spring um, by Plum Street Samplers. And you can see, I, let's see, how can we do that? I changed the colors a lot. So that's what it is. And I left off the lettering on the bottom. And because I was kind of done, I wanted it, I, I just wanted it finished. But I also like the idea of just a long rectangle. So I changed up the colors. I did it on my own tea dyed linen. And I changed the colors. So I will put those in the show notes. And I had done this my very, was it my first mania? The first mania that I would have been in, May, Stitch Mania, um, would have been May 21. So I started it in May 21. I thought, let's get this baby done. So it was it was fun because I really like the design. I love the swirlies. Um, and I, I just love the swirlies. So when I did this rabbit, I just thought, oh, it was so fun and funky. And I loved that. And I know that Paulette does other rabbits like that and so i was looking through some of the charts that i have not even kitted up yet and look at this is um autumn gifts and there's that rabbit again so kind of fun um so that's going to be something fun to look forward to so again um what did i say it was hello spring hello spring and I will really try to do the drop down notes and put my color conversion of what I did in there. So here are some other fun things. Let's see, I think I should just drop those on the floor because it's gonna get crazy. Um, okay, some other fun things that I did was, I keep trying to pick off threads. I was playing around with some different um, stuffing. So this is just, so this is soft and squishy. This is the, just the cheap polyfill that you can get. And I've heard other people talk about different polyfills, but I had two large bags of this polyfill. They take up a lot of room. So when we were when we were getting rid of stuff and moving and we knew we were going to have to store it, when we were clearing out stuff, we would ask each other, do we, is this worth moving? Is this worth storing? Is this worth, worth, worth all this? And, and a lot of stuff we got rid of because it wasn't. So here I have these two huge bags of cheap stuffing <laughs> that I kept. And now I don't like it. It's too fluffy, but I thought I am going to use it because... <laughs> We had it in storage for a year and then we moved it. So I will, I will use it. And there's really nothing wrong with it, but it just, it's just um, really fluffy. And I like things really flat. So here's something fun. I have two of them. I have this one, Country Rustic Primitives on Etsy. This, and I think these were the called for colors, maybe. So we'll see. Otherwise I'll put it in the drop down because I did it last year. So I'm not going to remember. But it's funny because this is dark, um, and I think that was charcoal, and then this one is light. So I don't know which one it was charted with, but you can see kind of how it bows out. So this one is nice and flat, but look, <laughs> it is really different. It is really flat, and as someone who likes primitive things, I really like this one a lot. So what is this? This is just the cotton that's inside vitamins, supplements, whatever it is that you buy. And to keep it from banging around, there's little bits of cotton. And it was so funny because my husband was opening up a new thing of vitamins and he had these taco tongs and he was pulling the cotton out with it because he cannot stand. He says it hurts to touch cotton. And so I was playing around and teasing him with it. But, um, I started saving it because I think Lori Brecklin was was the one that was saying there's so many things that you can stuff your pillows with. And so I had a big bag of, of the cotton stuffing and I love it. And I know that you can buy it too. That's why I keep, I keep wanting to show you, isn't that cool how it's so flat? But you may not like that. So when I was showing my husband, he goes, oh, this one, this one's nice and fluffy. And that one's like all fluffy flat so just depends on what you like it do you want it fluffy or do you want it flat so um so so it's done let's get over it gets get over the flat or the fluffy but it is very interesting because when you're doing your pillows 
And then I was thinking, when you're doing your pillows, they're fluffy and they take a lot of room up. So I thought the flatter they are, the more I can get in my little cupboard. So that one, so hold in your mind that snowflakes because I have a box that I'm gonna show you that I did with the snow, just the snow portion of it. Okay, so here's another fluffy one, but see, look, at, I love the backing um, on mine. So this was one I had started and I had started doing it with the um, pearl cotton, which is the Valdani size 12. And I thought it was so cool that it gave it kind of dimension and a thickness. And then I couldn't match the colors because I didn't have that many. And it stalled out for like two years. And I thought, oh, good grief, let's just get this done. And let's just use the cotton. So I did a color change. This one is from Primitive Stitchin' by Shelly On, also on Etsy. So this one is fun. I will put in the show notes, but I think it was raw um, Zweigart. And it was, it was a big stitch. I think it was 28 count because I was needing to do, I needed the count so I always think the count, the numbers, the numbers smaller, um, have it. Had, I'm, I'm getting back into the groove of things. I can't even talk. We'll see if I can get this done, but the count was larger. The box, this, the squares were bigger. That's it. The squares were bigger. <laughs> so I'm not push and stop. We're going to move forward because I need to go for my walk. Anyway, shoot, there we go. Showed you the chart. I am, um, I'm needing to get, I'm thinking to push stop. No, I'm not going to push stop. This is just as if you were in my room, I'm not going to be uptight and I'm just going to move on. But this is another finish, another finish. Happy Easter Primitive Stitching by Shelly on. So there you go. I'll put the colors in the drop down box on the floor. Now, um, some of the questions that I had, I shared um, this, I've got threads everywhere. Okay, I shared about this before in the last video, I had not finished it. And I talked about getting my thrift store frame. We, we turned into like professional thrifters when we were living up in the mountain because we had the best thrift store. And it was so funny, usually I have something on that's from a thrift store. Um, or I'm, I'm using something. So this was $3 at a thrift store. The shirt was at a thrift store. The earrings were at a thrift store. <laughs> the purse that I, I used to go shopping earlier, probably from a thrift store. But thrift stores are cool. And so you can get a lot of frames there. This is, this is the chart. Um, First Snow, it's a free chart by The Drawn Thread. And um, I don't even know if I kept track of my threads, but I know that this brown was dark chocolate and dark chocolate is out of stock from one place that I was checking, but I really like it because it's got the dark brown and the light brown, so it looks very natural. But the drawn thread, I will not throw this baby on the floor. Okay, now here is something else that's, that's fun. So this is, this is really, even though I always talk about visiting with people on the videos because that's how I feel about it. I'm sitting alone in my room. I'm talking to myself um, on my iPad, but then when I put it out there on my channel, I never know who's gonna see it. I never know the reception that it's gonna get. But, but this, like I said, this last video had an enormous reception and so, so many amazing comments. And um, so many new people came to visit and commented. So I had shared about um, a stitch that I had done that was, um, it was very special to me because of how my family worked together after my dad passed away um, last year. And so I had done the stitch um, in honor of my family. So the story is on the last video, but this is a comment. And I was saying that I really don't decorate for um, New Year's Eve. And so I think I was just going to make a project bag out of it. And then as I was playing around in my room, I had a box that was, I'll show you the back. I had a box 
that um, had the, uh, the lid was broken and I thought, eh, I can fix it. And I had been playing around because it was the perfect size to go in this box. But I was thinking, do I want a box that has, um, it's old Lang Syne. So it has a New Year's Eve um, thought to it. But then I thought, I love it. And it was special to me and it fit perfectly on the box. So I got a comment. And let's see if I can read it without my glasses. But it was from Raymond Stitches. So this is one of my new family members, um, my stitching family that's come to visit. And I wanted to read to you what that comment said. It said, I just stumbled upon your floss tube video and what a treat. The old Lang Syne piece has a very touching story and perhaps you'll decide to frame it and leave it up all year long, not just for New Year's time. It's a piece with a wonderful remembrance of a painful but a beautiful time and it just it was like after I had just had it sitting on the box because I was thinking do I want to do it or not and I read that comment and I thought yes yes that's my confirmation that it's not because I was thinking is it weird that I want to have that up all year long anyway so it, this is um a heart string samplery by Beth Twist it's a freebie but this is my finish so um I have done the color change, so I'll put that again in the show notes, but these, these are my family members and, um, it's just, it's just fun because that's the interaction that I get with you guys. When you comment and I comment back, I read them. <laughs> I just don't always comment back cause I'm lazy sometimes. So, but that's, that's how special you guys are to me too. So, um, the, the top had been broken, not that, yeah, this side, my husband fixed it for me. I tried to fix it and it just broke worse. So he's, he's a great fixer. So um, that's the bottom. And I wanted it to be more, I picked that even though um, it's just because of the colors, there's the colors. But my dad had a tiger's eye ring that he wore all the time. And it just reminded me of that. So um, I am gonna be adding more things to this. I usually put something up here for a needle minder. I usually put something inside for a pin cushion, but I'm going to show you. I have been finishing boxes like crazy. And because of this time where usually I would do one project, go on to another, finish that box. But no, I, I made tons of stitching boxes this week and I have some more plans for for more, but I'm not feeling the pressure of like going to Hobby Lobby and buying something for a needle minder just to get it done. I love collecting and I love looking at antique stores and finding just the right thing or as I'm, I'm unpacking, what can I use to put in that box? And if you go back, um, for those of you who are new, um, I have two previous videos from a couple years ago that have stitching boxes on the thumbnail and I go into great detail all about them, but they, they give me so much joy. And I've been hearing from other people, even, you know, from the two years ago when I did those, that a lot of people got into the stitching boxes because they saw mine. And again, it's happening now. So let me take a drink. And again, <laughs> thrift store glasses gotta love those thrift stores so here is something fun um i had i had found this turkey stitch when i was on etsy it just had um it just have you know you bought this so it's giving you suggestions and finding primitive patterns is usually fun most of them are cutesy or fun but um i made this one and i loved it and i was up at the cabin for Thanksgiving last year, we had not planned on it. We were planning on being back here in Colorado for Thanksgiving, but something came up and we needed to spend three months um, at the cabin. And so I'm like, oh, I have Thanksgiving decorations. I have all this stuff, but it was so cool for me. So this, this became very special for me. I stitched it up right away. Who is, okay, Rhonda from Asbury's Echoes on Etsy did this pattern. The fun thing is recently I saw, I was catching up on videos and saw that Christy at Daisy K's Primitives, Christy and Shanda stitching in Idaho, half of what they stitch, I've got to stitch too, because I just, we have similar, we have similar likes. And so it was so funny that I saw Christy had done this. 
and I did a color change and this this one was so cool because it had but it's a really old thread because I did embroidery about 20 years ago and got into the over dyed flosses and I tried to find it and I can't find it so who knows so I tried to do the color conversion and I that was during the time I was not even thinking about floss tube wasn't even sure if I was going to do it again and I didn't even write down what I used. So I was trying to recreate it. And this brown, because I didn't do the called for it, this brown um, is probably the dark chocolate or or molasses, but it's one that's a dark brown and almost like a blacky, a really a light black color. But um, I did it on 36 count Ren, I can tell because that's, um, that's one of my favorites. And I wasn't going to do the coffee dyeing because I didn't have those supplies with me, but I had all my threads with me. So Asbury's, Asbury Echoes. And I've been watching Rhonda's um, floss tube, catching up on that. So now I know, I know um, how she came up with the name of, of her Etsy shop and also her floss tube. But I thought, and it, see, I love the fabric. This this was a line of fabric that I bought when I was at the cabin because I was stuck there for a long time and I had my sewing machine and I was gonna make a whole quilt out of this fabric line, um, but I didn't. But um, anyway, threads everywhere, not gonna worry about that. Anyway, I love this, but this, oh, I was, I was gonna tell you, um, this, this is just what it would be like if you were hanging out with me, except we'd both be drinking coffee. Um, so this was so fun because I had a little tiny nightstand next to my bed and I had a little little bit of decorations down below, but I had this fabric just laying there and this stitch just laying there on top of it kind of folded up. Um, and that was, that was like my Thanksgiving decorations last year. But this one is so special, but I didn't tell you. Inside I had mulling spices. So it smells good, but it feels kind of crunchy and funky and it is, it's fun. So Rhonda, if you're watching this one, one of my favorites, it's an amazing pattern and I appreciate, I appreciate that and how special that came for me last year. So I was watching Rhonda Asbury Echoes um, floss tube and she was just saying that she was getting excited about stitching boxes after watching my video. And um, so she went antiquing and got some boxes. And it was so fun because that's what I love. I love to inspire. I first found out about stitching boxes from Lori at Mischievous Stitches. And I got, that's where I learned about the Brie Wax. Um, wax that you can buy. It's cut, It's basically a stain wax combo. It makes a mess and it smells horrible. So I do it outside, but I have lots of boxes to show you and I'm going to show you those in a minute. So I'm trying to go according to what, what I've got stacked in front of me. Had another question from a viewer asking about, because I had talked about putting some of my stitches on my project bags and she was asking, how do you do that? So I'm, I'm not even gonna talk about how I make my project bags. Check some of my old videos out. And I, I always have a book, um, I think it's called Stitched by Anila Hui. And then on my channel, oh, two things I gotta tell you about my channel. Um, I keep wanting to lean forward because I feel like you're so far away. I'll just chill and relax. That feels better. Okay, so on my channel, if you click on my channel, um, one of the things that you will see is playlists. And I have lots of playlists because I love to share resources. There's one like project bags, yada, yada, yada. I don't know, because I've added to it. The very first video that you'll see was the first video that I saw on how to make a project bag. But also Celeste, Celeste Creates, is the first video that I followed along with and made a project bag. I've made very, I've made a lot. I've made a lot of project bags, but I've put stitching on it. So I wanted to share with you um, because I made the comment and I said, I will show um, on my next video how I put, how I put this on. So that book stitched is how I learned to do the flange and how I learned to do these project bags. But this is a freebie by, oh my word, it's called Baby Alphabet. I'll put it in the show notes. Um, 
but this is how <laughs> let's calm down okay this is how I put it on I just fold the edges under I iron it and I hand stitch it on and then sometimes I'll do um, like a primitive stitch around it but it's really best to do because I do line these they are these ones I do line where it has the the thick fleece I haven't made a project bag in a couple years, so I've got to watch videos on how I do it again. I can't remember, um, but it really is best to stitch on your cross stitch piece to the fabric before you iron the fusible fleece or not. Now I'm thinking about it because that will make a bit of a, maybe that won't iron flat. I'm going to have to make one and then I'll share about it, but Usually I do tutorial, not tutorials. I don't even remember how I did it, but I will just show you and inspire you and you can figure out too how to put those on. So that's one way to do it. Most people will do a piece of fabric here, piece of fabric here, one across and one across. I just, I like it where it's put on separately. Just my thing, my thing. Here's another one where I just did, this is needle punch. Um, but I just rolled the edge under and stitched that baby on. Then I made the project bag. Here's another one. And I've shared about all these on other, on all my past videos, but this was, this is a pocket and this is a stitched piece. And you can see I did the blanket stitch around it, but this one was attached on that. I think there was a mistake that I had done. Oh, I got to watch. There's my Riley. Um, I've... I can't even remember um, how I attached some of these. This one, um, did it, did I stitch on there? Sometimes I'll stitch around the edge and put that on there because sometimes it leaves a little bit of a gathering on the edge. This was, this was one um, that I did a zipper bag. So this was different and I even put vinyl. This is the first one I did like this. I did vinyl on the inside, but I just machine stitched around the edge. But I do like, I love dimension. I love texture. I don't think you can see, but it's like, it has a little bit of an edge. And so it just looks like it's on top of there. <laughs> okay. I'm not pushing stop guys. We're just bearing through this. Now, <clears throat> this was one of, this fan this. Oh, mom and dad. Um, it's hard being in the city. They moved here to Montrose, Colorado um, in 95, I think it was. And um, sometimes it's hard being here and they're not here. They're up, they're up on the cemetery. Um, <laughs> and they, Sometimes I just think, oh, mom, you should be right down the street for me. So sometimes it's emotional. I'm not going to cry. But this this was something that I had stitched for my mom, just embroidery. I, I don't even think it was a pattern. I had been done tons of bare root patterns at the time. These are just French knots. But this is, see, this is how I got into the, um, the hand-dyed floss when I did embroidery. But look at how amazing that is. Um, so... French knots, stitching, um, but I have two of these. So I thought, well, I've got mine and then I had made one for mom. So I'm going to take it. <laughs> this was the, the fancy finishing I had done at the time, but <clears throat> I'm going to put this on a project bag and then I'll, I'll have done it. And then I can share with you on an upcoming, excuse me. I did, <laughs> I, did I always drink water <coughs> before I do these videos. So we'll see if I can keep going. Anyway, I'll put this on a project bag. Then I will be able to share with you how I did it. Now, more stuff, more stuff on what I have done. Now, I, a lot of times I had talked about not usually ironing my, if I have a whip, which is the works in progress, I don't always, I don't, iron it usually before I go to show it to you. Some people apologize for that. I, no apologies here because it's as if you were just right here. And if you were going to come visit me in my room, I'm not going to be ironing stuff. We're just going to be yakking away talking. 
So as I'm preparing these to fully finish, this this was one I had shared on my last video, but it's Primitive Betty's. Um, I did some ironing and then I was trying to watch some of my old videos to see what I had actually shared and how I used to talk, uh, which is just like this. Um, and there was one thing I was sharing that Kitten Stitcher had talked about over ironing your cross stitch. And the crosses create facets. And I did I don't like to flatten them down. I like to keep them nice and beautiful. So this I had inherited from my mom. I'm not gonna pick all the fuzz off of here, but this is just an ironing cloth. So it's like um thick flannel. Um I don't even know. I'm sure she bought this just as an ironing cloth. But what I do is I will fold it flat and I will, to be able to keep the cross stitch from getting flattened, I put that on top of that and I'll iron it. And even as I'm putting, if I'm using the interfacing on the back or whatever I'm doing, I always use this cloth. But if you don't have one of these, I was thinking, what could you use? A kitchen towel, a clean clean kitchen towel. <laughs> you can do that, but that's just another way to protect your stitches. So there we go back there. Now um, I'll share with you about the boxes. They're down there. Okay. <sighs> Time goes by so fast when I'm trying to do these videos and I'm trying, <laughs> trying to share everything that I've got here, but I've got tons of boxes coming up. So do I share with you should I put this stuff away? What, what should I do? What should I share with you? Um, what I think I will do is I'm just gonna pull my boxes up because if I yak about those so long I don't get to the other stuff, you won't even know. So hang tight. <laughs> Look at these treasures. Okay, since I was talking about the boxes in the last video, and um, they are one of my current favorites. I really got into a lot of different things. I was, my gosh, I keep leaning forward. Let's just relax. Um, I got into needle books for a while. That was my thing that I got into stitching boxes. And it has been very fun doing the stitching boxes and planning and creating and either when I'm at antique stores picking up a box or just at the Hobby Lobby um, picking up boxes. It's been fun. And then I just have, I have a box of boxes, which again, moved all those things. Um, so I'm gonna use all of those. But this is something that I'd shared about Hobby Lobby plain card boxes. You could put two decks of cards in here. They used to be $3.99, now they're four, no, four, three fifty. dollars now they're four fifty. But this is the color that they are. I'm sucking all those threads in. This is the color they are, and they're cheap. Um, and so you've really got to check them. You can't just pick it up and go. You've got to check and make sure that the latch is working, the whole shebang. But this is what they look like. Then you get some paint and you get some Brie Wax and this is what they can become. So I was showing my husband and I was like, look at this. So if you don't do primitive, this is like, oh, that's probably a mess. But if you do primitive, you're like, that is cool. So I, I had gone antiquing and all of the boxes here. I had gone antiquing and bought this wood box and it smelled like some old garage. It had oil on it, but I knew it had potential. And you'll see, it, it is beautiful. But I had that box in mind as I was in the garage playing around with this stuff. And I used, for that Brie Wax, it is nasty, the smell. And so I had to open the garage door but I use colorist gloves or um, like hairstylists that are dyeing hair. They're, they're just like gloves that you would wear. So I got a box of 100 on Amazon, and but my fingers broke through. And so I probably still have some stain in my fingertips. So I use, I would never use my bare hands on that because it's toxic stuff. But this was a larger box, same thing, Hobby Lobby or Michael's. 
I think this was Michael's, and it was an, an eight inch box that I had bought for something else. And I had stained it because up at the cabin, I became a master stainer, varnisher, caulker, <laughs> you name it, I was doing it. I'm not going into construction trade. I'm done with all that. But while I was staining stuff, I decided I'd stain this box and it was boring. So I thought, well, what are we gonna do? So you just sand it down, you get 180 grit, 180 grit sandpaper. It's very, very fine. And um, you just sand the edges. I call it primatizing. And then I open up the box and I'll sand anything you wanna sand and make look a little more primitive. Um, and then, you, so you've either stained it or painted it, sand it, and then wax. Now the Brie wax comes, I think it's B-R-I, it comes in um, all different colors. And I've got one can and it's gonna last me forever and it's a darker one, it's Tudor Brown. And so you can get lighter, darker, but it's really, I'm gonna let, instead of buying more boxes or more containers of wax, I'm just gonna use either the stain or the paint to make the colors different. But is it, this is what I wanted to show you. It's just so fun and amazing um, that you can take something, a cheap something, and make it look like an antique. And then I stained the top, but not the bottom. I was, I was tired and um, I was tired of smelling that Brie wax, so I was done. So I like to play around with, I like to put um, the wool in the bottom. So if I have my thread and stuff in here, I don't like noises. So wool is thick and it holds on to things and the spools of thread aren't gonna roll around as much. So I may do something on the outside and what I'm thinking, did I throw that on the ground? Riley, where did I put that? Oh, here we go. Okay, so I was trying to think, what do I have? Um, that would work with this. And I was gonna do something else with this, but I thought, oh, this fits. So I think I'm gonna do this. And I may do, um, I may do something. I will do something, but what will that be? I don't know, I probably spent a half hour playing around with different things already. But this, this will be a stitching box. And I think that's the fun thing. For me, uh, does, I used to do, um, I was a professional woodworker um, making decorations and selling that in the 80s and 90s and all that, um, all that stuff back then that people were buying until now it's all made in China and sold at Hobby Lobby for nothing. So that career went away, but I was a designer and I loved, I loved the playing around and the designing. And so that's to me what the stitching box, the stitching boxes take that, give me that fun back that I can I can take patterns. I don't design cross stitch. That is one thing I cannot do. Um, I'll take cross stitch patterns or or whatever and think about what I can do with them. And since I'm into the boxes, that has been very fun. So cast your mind back <laughs> to, to this. Okay, so um, I made this and I had planned on it. So when we were up at the cabin, um, probably stuck in the snow. No, that was, that was, I think before the snow. Anyway, I knew I wanted to turn this into a stitching box cause I already had one and I thought I need at least 20 more. So this one snow. And then I showed you, I had, I had done this. This was from a Brenda Gervais pattern. Um, but it didn't fit so well. And I had a heck of a time. It looks like a girdle, a girdle that's too tight. So, I was I was rusty on doing the lacing and I had too much fabric to pull in lace. So I was trying to hold it down. And I cut it and then I cut too much. So it, this one, um, I like them to be perfect, but it's cute. It really can. It's got a stack of, of eight pieces of batting. I have that all here. Cause, oh, here we go. Here we go. I want to show... I want to show you guys everything how to do. So this is how I do it. I'll cut a piece of, it just fits right there. Cut a piece of um, cardboard or chipboard. And then I have eight pieces of batting. And the reason I do that is so I can really use it as a pin cushion 
Um, and this one is even flatter, probably because I was trying to squish it. Um, but I can really use it for a pin cushion. Then here's a button. And it's, I think it was from Hobby Lobby. This is just a button. I was trying to think of what I could do that was a snowflake. So I've got a little snowflake there. And then I'm going to turn this into a needle book. And when I was sharing this last time, I said, oh, I'll share with you where I got that, that little um, snowflake pattern. That's the snowflake pattern. You know, it just looks, it's amazing too what you can get free on Pinterest um, that's actually supposed to be free. Um, there's so much stuff that's cheated on, um, copyright stolen, um, on Pinterest. But anyway, that was, that was the, the pattern for this guy. And, um, this is how big I want the needle book to be. So this is how I do it. It's like I was done. I wasn't going to do the needle book that day. I will come back to it, but this is the fun thing. So this is, um, raw umber paint. And again, sanded. And this this I can clean up a little bit, but I like it kind of grungy, like it was from somebody's garage. And um, this this is the sanded down um, and brie wax. So that is that's a fun one for me. So country country rustic primitives pattern. Then um, I had one that I shared this from Christy. Daisy K's Primitives has this pattern and I had coffee dyed it and I I had even coffee dyed this ribbon and I was just playing around with it and I was doing it and I should have really checked. I wasn't as happy as with this when I was finished because of this, because it looks too froufroy, froufroy, Froof it looks too froofy for me when it should be more primitive, but I can't rip it off now because I got a bunch of glue on the box. So we'll see, maybe I'll remake it or maybe I'll just get over it. But this is, this was a red, this was, what kind of red? I don't know, a uh, barn red or something. Um, and this is gonna be, so I'm gonna create things for the inside of this box, but I loved how the red looked. I loved this, but, um, this, even though it turned out good, um, it just, I don't know that it's my vibe. So anyway, I can redo that one. It was a quick stitch anyway. Okay. Here's another one. This is a dark, so this is like, this was lush green, I think of Americana paint. Um, anyway, so a medium to dark green, nice and grungy. And this one is Threadwork Primitives. This is wintertime Threadwork Primitives. And I had started, I think I had done this guy. I had, I had done that deer and then I had originally started this and I messed up. <laughs> I was paying attention to something else and I didn't spell wintertime right. So I just quit and then restarted. So I may, um, I may take that and and turn that into a needle book or not because the inside this will be where the this will be where a pin cushion goes. This is just fabric that I've put in there, and it's just ready. So I just am trying to match things. I thought that was fun, match things up. But um, and this this was called for maybe maybe was that called for? Yeah, it looks pretty close to me. So wintertime threadwork primitives. But it was just the fun of choosing the paint for the pattern, what I'm gonna put inside, and then the fun idea of thinking what I have in the future. So as I was choosing paint to go paint my boxes, and I had quite a few boxes because sometimes they're so cheesy that sometimes you go to buy one and they don't have any good ones to buy. So if, if I see good ones, I'll buy them and have a little stock of them because I love, I love doing these. So I was choosing my paint and I had straw. I had, um, I had like a straw gold color and I thought, oh my gosh, that would be so fun for an Easter one. And so I was just going to paint the box and I thought, oh my goodness, I have a pattern for it. So Asbury Echoes, Rhonda, I had just bought, um, a pattern on her Etsy site, Hippity Hoppity. 
Oh, I have it here in the pile somewhere because it's in the process. It's in the process. Do I have it here? Anyway, back to my story. Um, I thought, what can I do that's Easter and turn it into a stitching box? So all I do is measure how big it's going to be on the count that I do. I usually do 36 count and I'll measure like this one, like literally just came to the very edge, um, which I think it's, I think these are like four by five or something like that. Anyway, so I measured it. So hippity hoppity, where are you? Where are you? You're here somewhere. Um, hippity hoppity on, on Rhonda's, um, Etsy shop, Asbury Echoes, is going to be my next stitching box. And I got so excited about it because I look at a pattern and sometimes I'll think, can I turn, so I've got the front, can I use a portion of that for the pin cushion and a portion of that for the needle book? Because that's just the way I've been doing them. And um, I just got so excited. So Rhonda, this and this one, I just thought, oh, that is so cool. So this was pretty bright looking when I had painted it, but then you do the sanding, you do the waxing, and it gets nice and grungy. And there's something, like I had my fingerprints were on there and I tried to wipe it up, but it doesn't matter because it's just the edge that's going to show. But um, this is going to be um, my Easter box. And so I will share that next time. But I was so excited that I had inspired Rhonda to do stitching boxes. And then I'm going to do a stitching box based on one of her patterns. And it's, it's under here somewhere. But um, the perfect components to being able to turn that into the stitching box. So I thought it was here. I was going to show you how I was going to do it. But I'll show you next video because it will be done. Now, oh my gosh, here's another new one. I was thinking these were my old ones. No, here's another new one. So this is um, from De the Little Tiny Deck the Halls book on from Blackbird Designs. And um, so this was one, I think I did this on Christmas Day maybe, but I love how the red turned out. Now it's funny because look at, I forgot to get the wax there, but you can always go back and get the wax there, or I'm pretty sure I can. Otherwise, I will just be looking at the front of that. But isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? And I made, um, I've never ordered from Purple Paper Mountain. I know a lot of, a lot of my people that I watch order from there. I made an order. Oh, as I was getting ready for this, it's already been delivered. It is so incredibly fast. I think I ordered yesterday morning and it came today. Woo. So I may do something around the edge, but I also may just have it, even though I laced it a little tight in some of those areas, I may just leave it like that. And I've got the wool at the bottom and I'll do something um, for, I'll do something for a needle minder there. And I've got the magnets and all that kind of stuff. So this is kind of fun because I do a lot of the pearl cotton, their balls, and they fit in here nicely. Whereas if I'm using this and actually using some thread, um, this is, this is like if I'm using a spool of thread, um, I can usually fit that in there. I'm already getting tired, so I can't explain everything. But the stitching boxes, I really do like to use them. So here's another one that I did when I hadn't seen you. This was one I actually finished at the cabin. So this was the box that I said I bought when I was at an antique store. So isn't that amazing how it really looks like it it has the similar tones, but this one was at the antique store and it smelled just like my grandfather's garage. And look at that had, that had been up there like that. Um, but I, I cleaned it up a bit. It was filthy. It had like motor oil on the inside, on the outside. It was a mess. So I just cleaned it and I used some water and a rag and I was cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. And then I use coconut oil and then I just buff it up. So this, this is just cleaned up and coconut oil. And there's so many people that are new to my channel that were saying, I love Prim. I love all the things that you enjoy. So this is for you all, um, that love the Prim. Um, how fun. I just love it. I love, love 
old wood. I was antiquing with a friend of mine and we were looking at something and it was old wood. And I just said, oh, I love old wood. She said, I know, I know you love old wood. And we were together when we bought this. That's an old antique spice, um, spice cabinet. So old wood. Okay. So this is what I really use them for. These were, this is what I knew would be in here. So this is the 80 weight Aurifil that I use for both wool applique and um, my cotton fabric applique. So this is Nesting by Kathy Schmitz. And I'm going to use, I have just a little bit. This is like, um, oh, this is Copper Penny. This is a 32 count Wichelt. And um, it is so cool because it's like, a greenish so cool so I'm gonna make a needle book out of it but I got a little piece of wool in the bottom but see I really do use all these and um, oh I love these and the clover I was wondering where they all were they're all in my little boxes so isn't that fun okay and doesn't stink anymore so these are some of the older ones for my new family members that are watching me um, I'm going to show you some of my older ones. And then I've talked about these on old videos, so you can check them out. Here's another one. This was from um, the Deck the Halls book. This is another one that I had turned in. So they're all ovals. They're supposed to be strawberries. But when you make a strawberry out of cross stitch, you, you don't see the whole design. So I thought, oh, I'm going to do this. So this was called for Colors. Um, and I think partridge, whatever it is, it's from the book. And I had shared at the time how I did this. It was, it was the cons. This is a rock. This is a heart rock. One of the things that I collect. So it was the concept of using my collections for these needle minders. And that's what I'm going to do with the other boxes is I've still got tons of stuff that's in the garage or I'll find something. I'm looking up at um, I will do, oh, so many people have asked for studio tours. I'll do that. Actually, right now, the floor is full of all the auditioned things that didn't, didn't get made yet or did. But I'm looking at a cabinet and I have all these little tchotchke things. So some of them may get turned into needle minders, but, um, that's that box. Then this was... I think this was, no, this was not the first one. Another Hobby Lobby box, the same color, um, raw umber. And this was from, I can't share everything because otherwise I'll never be done with this. Antique button, um, fun things inside. But this used to be when this, when I was in my California sewing room, this used to be next to that little, oh gosh, I just need to relax. Um, this used to be next to my little stitching area, right next to my sewing machine, and I would use it. This was my very first one. And um, this was from the Loose Feathers Blackbird Designs. Um, it was from the Autumn book. But this one um, was so fun, and I had shared it was, it was a box that I got from my mom, and my dad said it was a cigar box. And he said it's supposed to be upside down when you open it, but I didn't know that. And this is how I did it. But this was also from that same book, Blackbird Designs. So fun. So as I'm, and see, I use it. So these, oh, this is the Pearl Cotton um, Valdani variegated. Oh, I got lots of scissors. They're all stuck together. But um, I really use them as my stitching boxes. Usually I have these separate. But I was thinking for that big box that I did, that eight inch square one, I may do a separate kind of pin cushion like this and have this just setting in. Like all the, the Blackbird Designs books, they, they have usually separate things like this in their stitching boxes. These were the ones, was this, which one was my first one? I think this was the one that, this was the one that started it all. This is on a thumbnail from, um, from the videos. So this one, was my first one. So this did start it all. And um, that's where I like using something special as a needle minder. I've got my pin cushion needle, needle book, needle book, yeah, needle book, and just little tchotchke things in there, useful things. So that was one of my first ones. 
I think what I love about it is the weight, the sound, the feel. It just feels like to take it from that that plain, this plain thing that's just light because it's cheap wood. It's just light and taking this and turning it into this just makes me happy, makes me happy. This was my second one that I did. A whole video too, you gotta check that one out about how I turn all these things that I've been collecting and they're falling all over the place and turn them into something fun. So um, I have a whole story about, about all, <laughs> all this stuff in that video. It's probably an hour and a half long. Anyway, um, do I wanna finish this up? Okay, I'm gonna share about these things cause I'm gonna put them away. So I usually like to stop at an hour, it's an hour. So if anyone's still here, um, this was, this was my yesterday, was it yesterday? No, two days ago was St. Patrick's Day. So I finished, um, I finished this guy. And I am loving, at first when I was doing this one, Threadwork Primitives, um, these are, are the Beggars, it's a Beggars series. I have them all and I'm gonna show them to you. But when I was first doing this one, I changed the colors up. And this was my first thing that I got back into lacing. Again, I haven't done it for two years, the lacing, and um, because this one, see there's supposed to be a line of stitching across here um, that isn't really even showing. I think I'm gonna have to redo this one because it didn't turn out as perfect as I want it. But I changed the colors and I'm really realizing something about what I like in stitching and changing some things. I'm really attracted to the darker, the darker threads, sometimes the darker linens but you have to be careful with the thread and the linen when you start to change things up. But this was a darker thread that I had used and it's a Valdani um, embroidery floss. Now this was one that I had bought long ago and then I went to rebuy this thread and it's much lighter. So I had a lot of these, I had a collection that I had bought of Valdani embroidery floss back when I did, well, embroidery floss. <laughs> when I had done embroidery. The newer ones, probably not the same color, but the variegation is very interesting. But I really, I really loved it. And the sad thing is if you guys go to order this thread, it's not gonna look like this. It's much lighter. And I've started using the lighter one. Um, but it was fun. And at first when I started stitching it, I get all caught up in, it doesn't look exactly like somebody else had done or exactly like the pattern. And usually it's because it's not dark enough or the variegation isn't showing up enough. And I get all hung up on it and then I'll put it away. So now what I'm doing is I'll let my, I'll tell myself, if you don't like it, you can restitch it. And I'm like, oh, okay, let's stitch away. Generally, I'm happy with it. So it's the weirdest thing. But um, anyway, this is beggar's luck. And the fun thing is, that I can just pop this out of the frame and look at all these. So these are, this is the whole beggar series. Now, Nan, I think it's Nan Lewis. Oh, I hope she does some more because this was the first one that I did. So this is beggars, well, it would be the October one, like beggars night maybe it's called. Then what do we have? Beggars fourth. So this was another one that I did and, um, so this one, I just finished Beggar's Fourth. Then we have the Valentine's one, maybe, I don't know, Beggar something or other, Valentine's. And then the Christmas one. But, oh, she could do Easter. She could do Thanksgiving. Um, so many more that she could do. And I love having that, that collection. I, I have always, when I used to do the woodwork and I was the vendor, I did all seasonal things and sometimes I would have one pattern that I did and I would just do it for all the different seasons because I loved it. All my friends were in it and we, we traded things around. So I really love that this, I can have lots of seasons. This is all the space that it takes up and I just change it out with that same frame. So I love that concept. Then my other fun thing that, that I wanted to get into 
was this um, moss stuff. So because I like primitive, this, I just bought this this week at um, our local nursery. It's just dried moss. And then I went to Hobby Lobby, they have something similar. Now, sometimes they have a brighter green. I really wanted natural because in our mountains, we got this going on, not this much. And so I knew the color that it should be, but this is just moss and um, it's really messy. I used, uh, we have a bar, an island bar in our kitchen and I was using that because I didn't want it all over my carpet. And oh my word, this stuff made a mess because as you kind of rip it to the size, so there you go, um, preserved moss, um, you could probably just get it at Amazon too, but I loved that I could actually see it and see that it was a dark color. So I had no St. Patrick's Day cross-stitch decorations or anything since I had been getting more primitive. I had it back in the day when I used to do the wood decorations, but those were cutesy. Um, it just, I was done. I was, when I got out of that, I was like done with all those decorations. And um, so I haven't had anything. So this one was fun. This was the first one. See, ooh, how flat that is. So this is going to be fun because I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do an Easter decoration thing in there too now, but I wanted to leave it in here and show you. This thing is just Hobby Lobby. They are so overpriced now, even though they say, eh, 40% off. Oh my gosh, just so expensive. Anyway. Look at how lovely and flat that is. This is that cotton. Um, it's the cotton. The great thing about that as opposed to the polyfill is the polyfill kind of wants to bounce back, um, but this just stays where you put it and it was, it was fun. So this is Shamrock, oh, Lucky Shamrocks, a freebie by Threadwork Primitives. I had made an order and the pattern came in my order from, because I ordered it from Threadwork, Threadwork Primitives Etsy shop from Nan. And so the pattern came, but I've seen it on Pinterest too, but it's a freebie. And I, I now, because I was so happy with the colors of Beggar's Luck that I wanted to do similar colors, but I ran out of that really dark green and I used the newer version of it. But I'll write down my colors for this because I... I wanted it similar and dark. So I'm leaving those colors on the ring and I've got that over on the other side of my table, but I'd trip over things getting it for you. But just a fun thing. And then I want to do, there's another freebie. Um, it's so sweet. Oh, I can't, I don't know if this chair thing is going to work because I just want to keep leaning forward. Um, several things. So there's a freebie, um, Lori Brecklin, uh, not Forgotten Farm, but her, her blog spot is like um, Farmhouse Not Forgotten, but it's it's darling. It's a, it's a St. Patrick's Day freebie. And then on her site, I bought, I can't show you because it's just the, the chart, um, Lucky O'Green. He is so cute. So um, I'll stitch that for next year because already I want to be getting on the Easter things. But this is, did I share this with you? beggar's luck. Um, so it's not terribly different what I did. It was just a different green. Um, but that's, that's, there you go. So I have other fun things to show you what I'm going to be stitching on, but I'll share that with you next time. I had people asking, um, or just saying they hope to see me again soon. You know, let's not do two years in between the videos, but somebody was asking, how if I would do these regularly so they could see what I've been up to and and I'll see I don't know um I don't know how regular I will be at the moment I'm not working I'm planning on getting back to work so we'll just see we'll see how this works we'll see um how this goes because I still have tons of stuff that I want to share with you so we'll see I would like to do about every two weeks we'll see oh and the quilts I had a lot of questions I'm going to be putting this quilt in the drop down um but this one if you've stayed till the end for all three of you um this book is from Simple Comforts and and I'll sh I'm going to do I'm going to be doing a quilting video because I, I've been making quilts um, while I was gone from here and I want to share about those about those but look at how 
I did it almost exactly, even as far as the center. But um, Kim, Kim Deal, this book is still available. And something really cool. Let's get that. Okay. Um, this quilt. I'm going to share about both of these quilts up close um, in a quilting video. But this one, actually, I already did that one up close and personal um, in a whole another video. If you look at the, um, down my my channel, thumb note, thumb notes, thumbnails, that video, I share all about that. So I don't need to redo that one. This one I've never shared, um, but it is like a Frankenstein quilt. I have so many quilt patterns and I will only make so many quilts. So I like to combine things. Whereas this is exactly, whereas this, I changed it a lot. This is old, old pattern, but even the little that you can see from this angle, that's not what it looks like. I took the components, I took the ideas, and I changed it up. This was the house, so I switched out the house, and I used that house. And then these top pieces, those were from another pattern um, that I had gotten from my mom. But another super cool thing, if you look, um, past video um if you're a quilter there's there's one called um oh it's this pattern but it's a red and white quilt that is the only quilt i cannot find it's somewhere packed i probably used it as packing but it's so cool because at the time um i was so excited that this pattern was available and i shared where you can get it um, fabric essentials and then it sold out and a really neat story and I'll share it in the quilting video it's available now because of the video that I did um, so I'll share about that in in the quilting video that I do but to me it was just so amazing that a quilt that I made and shared and I showed my mom and my sister have made that pattern too. Um, so many viewers wanted to get that pattern and it affected the quilt shop owner and what she did to be able to make sure that she could always have that available. And I thought, wow, to me that was just, it was amazing. It was amazing. And it's because of you guys, you guys watch and you purchase and and I do that too and sometimes that's why I don't watch floss too because I don't have self-control and I just want to buy everything and so I just was like calm down just stitch what I got so anyway um let's end this and I want to share something with you so um I appreciate you guys watching welcoming me back for those of you that stay to the end um, that you have cared enough about what I'm sharing and listening to me to stay all the way to the end just amazes me. So I thank you so much and um, I value that. And many of you who watch me also share my faith or just like to hear me um, sharing about my faith. And I do what I call the good stuff at the end where I share with you about how I walk out my faith with my Jesus and how I have not just a religion, I have a faith because it it's a personal relationship that I have with my Heavenly Father and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. It is mind-blowing to try to explain to someone about the Trinity, three in one. Um, I'm not even trying to do that right now. What I want to do is, um, this was, I did some... Um, personal counseling with a friend of mine and um, she recommended this book to me. So New Morning Mercies by John David Tripp, I think his name is. I, I love texture. So I bought this one. It's like leather and I love it. And it's one that you can write in. Um, and I do sometimes I'll, I'll write and journal on the edges, but um, the way that my faith really came into action <laughs> earlier, um, or as it was several days ago, trying to move out here and get reestablished, or not reestablished, we've never been out here before, trying to establish our life, get just 
just changing healthcare from California to Colorado. Um, there's so many things that we're doing right now and I don't like new things. So I was, I was having a bunch of roadblocks <laughs> with our new healthcare and just trying to understand I was making a call and I couldn't understand even what they were telling me and I was stressed out anyway. It was not fun and I just thought, what did I get us into? Did we choose the right healthcare? And it just escalated. It was, I was on, I was trying to do something for two and a half hours and it just escalated and I already have, <laughs> I'm already emotionally unbalanced and it just like put me over the edge. And um, it just, I was just like the crazy cycle, the crazy cycle. So at the time when I was like flipping out and crying, I just had to think, what's the problem? What's the solution? What's keeping me from getting to that solution? And so that's something I learned long ago that really helps stop the crazy cycle <laughs> sometimes. And so the next morning we acted on those plans and it worked great. But in the time that I was like losing it and totally flipped out, I remembered a devotional that I had read the day before. And so I reread it, but I wanted to share it with you because I, I love when you guys share with me your life. And um, I know that everyone has challenges that they're working through, some greater than others at the moment, but we all, we all have our moments. But I wanted to read to you the devotional because the reason I got this is the woman that I was counseling with it was perfect for what we needed counseling for. And that's why I bought the book. So I wanted to share this with you, but that concept was exactly what I needed. And this was it. Um, this was from March 13th. You don't have to worry about whether your world is under control. God rules. You just have to learn to trust him when his rule isn't evident. That's what I had to think. I stopped the freaking out and I thought, oh, um, I'm going to go back and I'm going to read this. And it was just so calming for me. And I thought, I got it. I got onto stitching. And then the next morning we got some answers, but I'm going to read this to you. <clears throat> I looked everywhere. I looked high and low. There wasn't a drawer, a cabinet or a dark closet. I didn't tear apart in my search. I even went out to the car twice to make sure I hadn't left it there. The file contained important papers and I had lost it somewhere. It was so frustrating. And after all my searching, it was just as lost as when I had begun. That night it hit me that my lost file was a picture of how little control I had over my own life. I do not even, I do not even have sovereignty over my little world to guarantee that I will never lose important things. It can be a bit scary to consider. You and I have very little power and control over the most significant things in our lives. You and I don't know what's going to happen next. We don't have a clue what will be on our plates next week or next month. We have little control over the principal people in our lives, little power over the situations in which we live, and almost no control over the, the locations of our lives. Honestly, facing our lack of sovereignty over our own life produces either anxiety or relief. And that, that was it too. Complete anxiety. And then coming to this, reading this, relief, relief. Anxiety is God forgetting. It is the result of thinking that life is on your shoulders, that it is your job to figure it all out and keep things in order. It's worrisome to think that your job in life is to work yourself into enough control over people, locations, and situations that you can rest assured that you will get what you think you need and accomplish accomplish what you think you need to accomplish. <coughs> Excuse me, let me get a drink. If you fall into this way of thinking, your life will be burdened with worry and your heart will be filled with dread. But there is a much better way. It's, it is God remembering. It rests in the relief that although it may not look like it, your life is under the careful control of one who defines wisdom, power, and love. In all of those moments when life is out of your control, it is not out of his control. 
For his dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom endures from generation to generation. And he does according to his will among the host of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. And none can say, none can stay his hand or say to him, what have you done? That's from Daniel 4, 34 and 35. You see, rest is not to be found in your control, but in God's absolute rule over everything. You will never be in a situation, location, or relationship that is not under his control. And then it says, for further study and encouragement, Psalm 94. And that night I went and I read Psalm 94. Uh, not 94, 97. Um, that's how that's how I walk out my faith. I thank God so often that he is sovereign because at 60, I realize I don't have the answers. Um, but God does. And I don't know what's around the corner, but God does. And, um, I rest in that. So, uh, thank you guys so much for being with me. And, um, I just pray that you choose joy. Nevertheless, thank you guys. Bye-bye.